All right, this presentation is going to address part one, which are the five health related fitness components. If you remember in the introductory presentation, I talked about 11 fitness components. Five of them are health related and six of them are skill related components. I talked a little bit about the difference between the two. This presentation is specifically going to be looking at the five health related fitness components. So what are the five health related components? We have cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, flexibility, and body composition. I like this visual representation of the fitness components because ultimately to really be fit, you need to keep these in balance the best that you possibly can. If you look at this as a pie, they all have equal parts of the pie. And the arrow on the outside shows you how they're all really interrelated. This slide just quickly shows you uh, a nice, easy definition to understand and comprehend. We're going to be breaking each one of these components down with their definitions as well. All right, so the five health-related fitness components. I want you to think of these in terms of trying to define what fitness really means. All right, and this is where the five fitness components come in. They're the blueprint for physical activity guidelines, and they're also a helpful tool for organizing and executing your own well-balanced routine. At Cupertino Middle School, we do take a lot of pride in our physical education program because we try to expose you to different aspects of fitness that really do address these five health-related fitness components. So what you really want to do is focus on keeping these five health-related fitness components in balance to really be considered fit. So what are the five health-related fitness components? We're going to start breaking each one of them down. Let's look at the first one. This is cardiovascular endurance. All right, when you think of cardiovascular endurance, you want to think of your heart lungs and oxygen those are words that come into mind cardiovascular endurance is your body's ability to efficiently deliver oxygen to working muscles by using your heart lungs arteries and veins the more you use your heart the more efficient and better it is going to be at delivering oxygen to working muscles at cupertino middle school we use the two mile run as a way for you to assess your body's cardiovascular endurance. Some of you have a really efficient cardiovascular system and your heart gets oxygen to your muscles pretty quickly. And that's why the two mile run doesn't seem too hard for you. And then there's others where the two mile run seems really challenging and very difficult. And that is because your heart is working really hard to get oxygen to your muscles. So the way that running is going to feel better for you is to run more and more often so that your heart can get used to getting oxygen to your muscles. So when you think of what a cardiovascular activity is, you need to think of activities that elevate your heart rate, get your heart moving, and also cause you to breathe heavier. That means that you're really using oxygen and getting that oxygen in your body. Some classic cardiovascular activities are things like running, biking, swimming, hiking. We've got treadmills, rowing machines, ellipticals. I thought of dance, and there are so many more activities out there. All right, they're endless. Anything that you can think of that gets your heart rate up for an extended period of time would be a cardiovascular activity. All right, now we're gonna be thinking of the second health-related fitness component here, and that is muscular endurance. When I think of muscular endurance, I think of lots and lots of reps. All right, muscular endurance is your muscle's ability to exert force repeatedly over a given period of time. 
For example, doing multiple push-ups, multiple sit-ups, multiple squats, multiple lunges. The longer that your muscles can do it compared to someone else before they get tired means that you have better muscular endurance for that muscle group or that activity. The barefoot challenge is a fantastic example of a fitness challenge that tests your muscular endurance because it has you record the number of reps that you can do in 40 seconds. Some of you can do quite a bit. Some of you can do quite a few reps and there's others that really struggle to get the reps. And that says a lot about your muscular endurance. Examples of exercises that test your muscular endurance. You know, take a look at this list. I mean, you're probably familiar with most of these. And I chose these because these are muscular endurance exercises where you can do multiple reps of them. Now we move into the third health-related fitness component, muscular strength. This is a little more complicated for your age group. When I think of muscular strength, I think of heavy, heavy weight. All right, muscular strength is your muscle's ability to exert maximum force in one repetition. For those of you that might know about powerlifting, that's a sport where athletes compete to see who can lift the heaviest weight in the world in different categories. All right. <clears throat> so let me explain this to you really quick. Let's take a body weight squat, for example. A normal body weight squat, you can obviously do more than one. However, if you wanted to only do, if you were only able to do one squat, think about how much additional weight you would have to add to your body in order to struggle to do one squat. That's what muscular strength is. So this is something you don't really want to focus on as a middle schooler. Because first of all, you need to have access to heavy weights. You have to have the ability to add really heavy weight to your body. When you do this, you have to have really good form. And a lot of us just don't have form because we're young and we're not experienced with lifting really heavy weights. Heavy weights are very hard on your joints and there's a higher risk of injury. And those injuries can you know, affect your, your growth plates. Um, lifting heavy weights is just dangerous in general. And you need to have a partner to spot you. And that's not always practical. And because you're still growing... You know, you probably don't even have the strength developed yet to even lift heavy weights. So how do you improve your muscular strength than if you're 10, 11, 12, 13 years old? The best way to improve your muscular strength is to do muscular endurance activities. So as you do more push-ups, you're going to get stronger. As you do more squats, your legs are going to get stronger. As you do more core exercises, your core is going to get stronger. So you're going to be building both your muscular endurance and your muscular strength at the same time. And then as you get older, your body develops more, then you can start thinking of ways to add more weight to your program. All right, now we're looking at the fourth health-related fitness component, flexibility. In my opinion, this is the most underrated fitness component, the one that we seem to give the least amount of attention to. All right, when I think of flexibility, I think of range of motion. All right, how far can my muscles and my joints move? Flexibility is your muscles and joints' ability to move through their range of motion. Touching your toes, back bends, being able to clasp your hands behind your back are all examples of flexibility. So, the dynamic warm ups that we do at roll call before we go out and do an activity are designed to help increase your flexibility. All right. So how do you become more flexible? It's really about practice and commitment. I mean, there are some people, of course, who are born extremely flexible and they really don't have to do anything and they're just flexible. For the most part, we have to really work on becoming more flexible. And there's two really effective ways of doing this. One is through dynamic stretching or dynamic warmups. And those are active movements where your joints and muscles go through their range of motion. Or you can do static stretching is where you hold a stretch in place for 45 seconds or more. Dynamic is much better to do before you work out and static is better to do at the end of a workout. But both really do help your flexibility. 
And finally, the fifth health-related fitness component is body composition. This one's a little more complicated and seems kind of out of, it seems to not fit in the list with the other four, okay? Because the other four are specific things that you can do to train them. Body composition is more about your lifestyle. It has a lot to do with genetics. It has a lot to do with lifestyle. But it's really how much fat mass do you have in your body versus your lean mass. So basically your body fat that you carry around is what would be considered your body composition. Factors that affect body composition. Obviously your lifestyle. Are you super active or are you sedentary? You know, if you're super active, you're probably going to have a different body comp, different body fat percentage than somebody who is sedentary. There is genetics. Genetics do play a role. You know, some people are just born with higher body fat than other people, and that's just a genetic issue. Nutrition has a lot to do with what you eat, how often you eat, portion control, all of that stuff. Types of exercise. There are certain types of exercises that burn more fat than others. You know, um, metabolism, your body's ability to burn calories while you're sitting around. I mean, all of these things are going to affect your body composition. All right. So now that you've listened to this presentation and gone through it, you are now an expert in understanding what it means to achieve and maintain optimal health. If someone were to ask you, are you fit? You can now ask yourself, well, do I have good cardio? Yeah. Do I have good muscular strength and endurance? Yeah, pretty good. Am I flexible? Yeah, I'm pretty flexible. Am I a healthy weight and not carrying too much body fat? Yeah, I'm a pretty healthy weight. Then you could respond with, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fit. I'm pretty healthy. Okay, but if you answered no to any of those, then that would be an area that maybe you would focus on before you could say you're completely fit. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot from this and we'll talk later.